So if we compare this with the original one, then I think this looks so much better. So let's grab ourselves another color calibration module. Let's click here, new instance, and let's rename it by holding control, clicking it, and now giving it a name. And in this case, I'm going to call it a white balance because I'm going to use this color calibration tool to change the white balance. And why am I going to change the white balance? Because it's completely off. The reason for that is because if you want a perfect balanced image, you need to make sure that all of these things match with each other. So the left hand side of the blue should match with the greens and the reds. Same goes for the middle and the right one. Okay. Now in this case, we see that there's not enough blue and that has to do with the environment that this image has been shot in. So I'm going to change the blues first. And in this case, I'll just add some in. Now keep in mind that when you are tweaking these settings, it might take you some time to get the right value. So don't worry and don't be afraid to experiment with it. I'm going to change the greens and the reds as well. So for the greens, I'm going to drop it down to match it more with the blues. And for the reds, I will drop this tremendously to have it better balanced overall. Now what we can do here as well is we can change the colorfulness, but I'm not going to do that. We can change the brightness and I am going to do that. And I'm going to use the input from the red channel, the green channel and the blue channel to increase the brightness of this image. Now I actually made a dedicated video on this color calibration module, which I'll link up here. So if you want to know why I'm using these values or these sliders, actually be sure to check out that video and I'll explain it to you there. Now that's it for this module. Now I do think it's a bit dull, so we need to add in some contrast, but I do think it's a bit too dark right now. So I'm going to add in some exposure as well so let's start with that let's activate the module and let's give it the correct values that i think will look good in this image now i'm not going to mask anything you could by going down here draw a mask or maybe a parametric mask or maybe one or the others but i made a video on that as well guess what i did that last week so be sure to check that out up here as well all right in this image we don't need a mask we could use a mask by the way and just darken the background and then make him or her brighter but in this case i wanted to teach you guys how to just edit a photo without overdoing yourself because a lot of times when an image is being edited people tend to go too far and i want to prevent that from happening right so let's see if we have overexposed something and underexposed something well we have we can see that up here by using this so red means overexposed blue means underexposed we don't have any underexposed pixels but rather than changing the exposure right now because we're just having to deal with the highlights i'm going to use the tone curve module and i'm going to drag this down till I don't see these red spots anymore, which means that nothing is overexposed. Okay, so now it's time for the fun part. And for that, I like to use the color balance RGB module. It's one of my most favorite modules in Darktable. We start off by going to the mask and then go to the contrast gray fulcrum. It's something a subscriber of mine has mentioned. So I always do this now before I start working in uh, this module. And we're actually going to create two instances, but we're going to start with this one. The second instance will be for the colors only. And then this one will be for the contrast only. Now, rather than going here to the master tab and changing the contrast right here, I'm going to the four ways tab, which allows me to change the shadows, the highlights and the midtones. And I'm just going to add in some contrast by dropping the shadows real quick and some of the highlights. Uh, to make sure that it doesn't get overexposed. And then I'm going to increase the midtones. And now let's move on to the next one. So we added in some contrast and I'm going to close this and I'm going to create a new instance. And I'm going to rename that instance saturation so that I know that this one is for the colors. Once again, we're going to click here and then we're going to move to the master tab because in this case, I want to add in the perceptual saturation grading and I want to work on the perceptual brilliance grading. Now we also have the linear chroma grading and the manual of Darktable says that the linear chroma grading affects the chroma dimension proportionally to its input value at constant hue and luminance. It does this globally 
with a flat coefficient using the global chroma, as well as on each of the shadows, midtones, and highlights masks. Then the perceptual saturation grading affects both the luminance and the chroma dimensions in a perceptual space proportionally to its input value at a constant u. It does this globally with a flat coefficient as well as on each of the shadows, midtones, and highlights masks. And then finally, the one that we're going to work on as well, affects both the luminance and the chroma dimensions in a perceptual space proportionally to its input value at constant hue and in a direction orthogonal to the saturation. Its effect is close to that of changing exposure but scaled perceptually. It does this globally with a flat coefficient as well as on each of the shadows, midtones and highlights masks. Right, so let's increase the saturation in the shadows. And let's do the same thing for the midtones. And let's do the same thing for the highlights. And I'm going to drop the brilliance grading of the shadows. I'm going to increase them for the midtones because I want to brighten the image up. And I'm going to keep the highlights as is. Now, notice that I still have this selected and I don't see any reds or blues appearing, which means that everything is perfectly exposed. Right, moving on to the next module, which is the final module again, is the local contrast one. Now, this is one module that I actually use in every video probably and in every edit that I do because it just adds in a great effect. Now it comes with its preset so it's got a clarity one and it has an HDR local tone mapping one. Now this gives it more a cartoon like effect especially if you increase it some more and if you work with the mid-tone range. Any clarity one is actually one that you can create very easily because the standard values are 125, 50 and 50 but if you bring this to zero, shadows to zero and you bring this to 140 you get the same effect now in this case i'm going to add in some more and put it on 150 now let's see it before and let's see an after that looks great now let's compare it to the snapshot so the previous version that i've edited and you see that we've got more colors over here rather than on this side so that means i need to add in some more colors so let's deselect the snapshot and let's go back to the color balance rgb module go to the saturation one and let's just add in some more there we go. Now, the great thing about this is if you've taken a snapshot, right? So let's say we're here at 17. I'm taking a snapshot. This is our newest snapshot, which is this version. We can see it's the same version. Now let's deselect it. Now let's say you make a mistake, right? So you go to the orientation one because this is what we started with. I press compress history stack. Now everything is gone. But if I click here, everything will be back again. And I have just restored the things that I've just deleted. So if we compare this with the original one, then I think this looks so much better.